Welcome everyone to Gamer Mill. Today, AMD held their CES event, and let's just say they had a lot to go over, and quite a bit of the leaks were very accurate. Either way, let's go over it. First up, AMD announced their Ryzen 6000 series of mobile APUs, and just like the league suggested, it is Zen 3 Plus built on 6 nanometers, and they finally got rid of Vega with RDNA 2. Not only that, but the top end models finally bring 5 gigahertz to Ryzen. Plus, it's quite a bit faster CPU wise, and the graphics, as you would expect, get a pretty massive boost. And really, that's going to be one of the main things I focus on as far as the Ryzen 6000 series APUs. And as you can see, it gets two times faster GP performance. This is why we really wanted RDNA 2 instead of Vega. But before I get to that, they made some pretty bold claims on battery, like up to 24 hours of battery life. Of course, there's a thousand factors that go into battery life. Up to is definitely the key thing. But simply put, they've got a lot of power management features in here that apparently give it significantly better battery life. Of course, being built on 6 nanometers, getting up to 5 gigahertz, having a new GPU architecture on the iGPU, performance is definitely going to go up as well. And as you can see, they claim it gets up to 69% faster video encoding, 125% 3D rendering, and up to double the gaming performance. And more specifically, they actually showed off a few programs. In Cinebench, it gets nearly 30% faster multi-threaded performance, 11% faster single-threaded performance, and in PC Mark 10, we're looking at nearly 30% yet again. This is a really big boost, especially since this is just Zen 3 Plus. Not a massive jump, just more of a talk in the whole TikTok style upgrades. But yet it still gets this type of performance boost. Definitely impressive. Next up, moving on to gaming, you can see that the 6800U, which is in ultra thin, it's not at all their most powerful APU, actually beats out the MX450, which is one of NVIDIA's discrete GPUs. And of course, if it can beat out an MX450, it can definitely beat out the 1165G7 from Intel. If you're looking for more specific numbers, I will go ahead and say that this is FSR on versus FSR off. But like I said before, I do believe that this is going to be one of the times where we can finally say that you get at least all right frame rates at 1080p for AAA games with an iGPU. And you can see, at least with FSR on, it absolutely gets that. Far Cry 6 gets nearly 60 FPS, Call of Duty Vanguard in the 100s, Deathloop 73 FPS, and Godfall 60. 61 FPS. Once again, of course, that's with FSR turned on, but even with it turned off, it does look like it should get at least 30 something FPS across the board, which is, of course, playable frame rates. Once again, this is not a discrete GPU. Definitely impressive. And moving on, we now have the desktop space. And here, this is where we got a little bit of a surprise just because pretty much all the leaks and rumors suggested that it was going to be the 6000 series and that is at least somewhat understandable i'll get to it in just a second but simply put that's not the case it's actually the 5800x 3d or at least that's the only processor that they currently have announced they seem to suggest that there were more but at the same time i'll get to this in just a second but the next gen ryzen processors are coming out in the second half of this year. So I will say they probably would have announced them here if there were more coming, but that could be wrong. Either way, it's spring 2022 and it is fairly impressive. It is still a normal 5800 XT, which like I've said before, I really didn't like that they were calling them the 6000 series according to the leaks, just because this really isn't a full upgrade. There 
only adding 3D vCache, though it absolutely does give some fairly decent performance gains. But of course, I don't really think it should be a full new generation, and it's not. This is called the 5800X 3D, 8 cores, 16 threads, of course, none of that's going to change, 64 megabytes of 3D vCache. Pretty massive number right there, at least if you ask me. 32 megabytes of 2D cache, so it's not just 64 megabytes and that's it. It also has the regular 32 megabytes of L3 cache as well. This one is 105 watt TDP, and you can see that it's supported on the 400 and 500 series motherboards. So unfortunately, it doesn't sound like it'll work with the 300 series, but at the same time, it's quite a bit of years old at this point, and really, we may still see some BIOS updates that give it support. I don't want to say that for sure, but we've somewhat seen a little bit of that in the past where it wasn't really supposed to be supported, but it was. But of course, the official support is 400 and 500 series boards, but we're talking all the 400 and 500 series boards. Not a bad deal at all. Moving on, AMD announced the RX 6500 XT. Oh, Really quickly, before I get to this, another thing, they did announce quite a few mobile GPUs, but they didn't really go over all of them. They're just, you have the S for slim, and uh, they have more M GPUs coming as well. So they're releasing quite a bit of new GPUs. But anyway, back to this, we have the RX 6500 XT. This one, like we've seen before, is based on six nanometers, 2.6 gigahertz gain clock, which means the leak that we recently saw that showed the clocks does seem to be accurate. And if that is the case, it's 2.6 gigahertz gain clock, but the boost clock is 2.8 something gigahertz from what I remember. So definitely a really fast GPU as far as the clocks. It only comes with 16 compute units, 16 megabytes of infinity cache. I believe they did confirm that it was four gigabytes of GDDR6, but I'm not 100% sure if they did confirm it during the stream. Either way, it's coming out January 19th for $199. And not to be a big bummer, but I really wasn't all that excited about that price just because when we look at performance, you can see RX 570. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's getting quite a bit faster performance than that. But when the RX 580 came out, which is more powerful than the RX 570, when the 580 came out, it was like less than $200, or at least fairly quickly after it came out, there were GPUs that were less than $200. So with the fact that it's been a few years since then, it just kind of was a little bit disappointing to me. Let's just put it that way. Of course, how the market is right now, 200 is amazing, but I have no doubt it's probably going to sell out almost instantly. Maybe not. Maybe they're actually going to have a lot of them. Time, of course, will tell. And next up, I don't have a slide for this, but the leak that I went over a little while back that claims something called Radeon Super Resolution was coming is in fact true. Radeon Super Resolution was also announced and it utilizes the FSR technology, but basically it supports all games through a driver. So developers don't have to develop for the game or anything like that. Now they didn't mention it, I don't believe, but from the leak that we saw, the only thing it does require is an exclusive full screen mode, which is basically just normal full screen mode. It's not borderless windowed mode. So I don't believe it'll work in borderless windowed mode if you do like to do that or any kind of windowed mode, it does require full screen. But still with that, you can get some pretty big performance gains. I do believe, at least from the leak, it only works on AMD GPUs, but still we're effectively talking about free performance or at least a really good upscaling tech where it isn't as noticeable as it was with previous tech. And finally, the creme de la creme, AMD officially announced their Ryzen 7000 CPUs. So as you can tell, they're effectively skipping the 6000 series with their desktop CPUs. Obviously the APUs are gonna be called the 6000 series based on Zen 3 Plus, but the 3D parts are still called 5000. So they are effectively skipping 6000. And as you can see right here, wow, have the leaks pretty much been 
completely accurate the um ihs right here it looks almost identical to the one that was shared a while back or at least very close it is land grid array so it's an lga socket this time just like the leak suggested and amd didn't really tease too too much but they did say one thing five gigahertz across all cores basically not only is amd moving to five nanometers with this Moving to a new architecture, I have no doubt it'll get really good IPC performance, but on top of that, they're talking 5 gigahertz across all cores. Ryzen 7000, here we come. So while that does it for today, I do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, but of course, let me know what your favorite part of the AMD CES was down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.